and you have to be like a really good player and there's a chance that you'll have <laughs> a lot of other really good accomplishments as well. <laughs> yeah, free top 16 or better, including a top four at free internationals in one year is phenomenal. Then you add in that world championships as well over in London and yeah, that is um that is quite the resume. We've got two really storied players here and since they've got the headphones on, we can let you in on their deck choices. Patrick is going to be playing Mew and Andre is going to be playing, I believe, we're going to be seeing Roaring Moon. So, two decks we've seen already, but not this specific matchup we've seen already. Now, I think some people have the misconception that this matchup is heavily, heavily favored for Roaring Moon. Don't get it wrong, it is favored for Roaring Moon, but you can absolutely win this matchup still. It is very, very winnable for this deck. I mean, I remember not too long ago in the stream making a very passionate case for, for Mew when we were sitting together last time, in fact. And Mew is one of those decks, yeah, Roaring Moon hits for weakness. And that is huge because it means that you don't necessarily need to, you know, use that attack, which is getting the automatic KO. But Mew, it's fast, it's consistent, it's got a lot of tricks. One Giratina, one Mew VMAX prized. That's not too bad, but a little bit worse. You see that Andre did, in fact, prize uh, his one of Squawkabilly EX. That's not great. <laughs> it is not. We are off here, and it looks like Patrick's going to be starting us off. Okie dokie. So, starting off with a Genesect being the active, but has that battle VIP pass, so already feeling pretty happy about life. Yeah, you're going to be going for... I mean, it's Mew and Genesect here. That's all we're looking for. The Some people go for Genesect, two Mew. Some people go for a free, free split. There is, of course, one Genesect prize. But Genesect to draw cards, Mew to evolve up later to do a bit of smashing. Yes, so also going to take a chance to look through to see what, see what, what is prized, uh, but looks like, uh, yeah, well, as we already saw, right, the prizes weren't really too bad for Patrick in this instance, so definitely going to be more than content with what he has to work with, but just going to want to make sure he has that knowledge before he makes any other decisions. It's very important to get, have awareness of what you have prized in Mew, especially early on. Given that you have so much draw power in the deck, you don't want to commit to an all-in play going for a dig for an important card, only to realize, oh, wait, hold on, I actually can't get to this card because it's in the prizes. Yeah, that is not ideal. There are a couple of Ultra Ball in hand, so there are going to be at least one more Pokemon being searched, and it does look like one Ultra Ball is being discarded with the other, and we've got two Mew Mew to Genesect, got an even split to start off. Of course, we haven't used any Fusion Strike system yet. Uh, no, of course, this is the ability that makes Mew the deck that it is. So it enables you to... I think it's been so long, we've not actually, actually described specifically how it works. So, Fusion Strike system, for those of you, in case you're not familiar with Mew, you know, uh, new to the whole thing, it lets you draw cards so until you have a number of cards in your hand equal to the amount of Fusion Strike Pokemon you have in play. So the idea is you just so you flood your field with your Mews and Genesects, you have six uh, Fusion Strike Pokemon out on the field, you draw until you have six in hand for each Genesect. Yep, very nicely put there. We do have a double colorless energy on the Mew. It's not going to do anything this turn, but it's ready for a Mew V Max to be attacking oh, next turn. Uh, double colorless energy. <laughs> we, we need to put on the sepia filter again. <laughs> oh, did I say double colorless <laughs> yeah. energy? Oh, I meant double turbo. That was just a slip of the tongue, that was. <laughs> but we have a double energy, and to be fair, it is a double colorless energy. It is, true. <laughs> but it's actually called double turbo, yes. although it is two colorless energy. So I, I feel all right yeah. about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's essentially the, 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 <laughs> like the equivalent in this format, right? But, it's a uh, description rather than the name. Yeah, so anyhow, does Patrick have a means of getting any more Pokemon out? It doesn't uh, that, that hand does not look great, actually. Look, yeah, no, actually, Patrick just passed. Okay. Four cards in hand and no means to play down any more cards or draw anything else, so it's just going to go to Andre now as we do see a Pokemon catcher heads to kick things off. Getting the Mew in the active, and it is possible to launch a turn one attack. There's a couple different ways to do it. You can do it with a Galarian Moltres using the ability plus Dark Patch plus attachment uh, for turn. Um, was that a, a Professor's Research just guarding three Pokemon catchers? Yeah, and there was a Pokemon catcher played, so oh, I believe... No, I think, it, I think it was play one, discard three. I, 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 it I might, think. That might have been all four Pokemon catchers. <laughs> all Goodness gone. gracious me. <laughs> I mean, at least your head's on the one you played is all I'm saying. I, yeah, I guess so, but uh, given how... I mean, this is a build option that we have seen some players opt for with a Roaring Moon, but four Pokemon catchers and all four gone turn one. That's... Uh, can't be feeling too happy about that. It's not ideal. Now, in terms of the turn one KO on the Mew, it is doable. Galarian Moltres using the ability plus Dark Patch plus attachment. 
or you can go for a Roaring Moon with Dark Patch plus Professor Sada's Vitality plus Attachment, or at least you could have done before Professor's Research came into play. So it is Galarian Moltres, really. I mean, you, you can double Dark Patch and attach onto a Roaring Moon, but that's just getting awkward. Yeah, it, it's not a really great start. And don't forget, as we mentioned at the beginning, the Squawk Ability X is prized, so further dig options for Andre are actually very limited right now. I'm not convinced we're going to be seeing a KO this turn as much as that's what you'd like to be doing. No, going second and hitting a Pokemon catcher to get a Mew into the active. You, you, you look at your lips at that point. You're like, boom, turn one KO on a Mew. Let's do this. Get a Mew off the board, get an energy off the board, but unfortunately not. Now we, oh, it's a slightly rough poker stop. You do get an energy in the discard. Yeah, that's, a, that's the one saving grace, but yeah, that was really not great. A Pokemon and a supporter discarded is, oh, is it just going to be an attach pass? No. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, we might be going the other way here <laughs> because Mew can bring it up. So we've got some maths that needs to be done here. Roaring Moon has got... Is it 230? 230. It's, it's two power tablets, so yeah. two damage modifiers. But There we go. Yeah. Well, it has to be power tablet because yeah. the spell doesn't work. So, yeah, two power tablet will put you from 190 up to 250, which will easily be enough there. 220 used to be the magic number, but there's a lot of Pokemon now, like Roaring Moon, that have gone up to 230. So one more power tablet will be needed. We've already got the Mew V Max. There's been one power tablet. There it is. Patrick wins game one. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. We spent so long talking about Andre donking Patrick, we forgot that Patrick could donk Andre. And we are heading off to game two. I mean, to be fair, it wouldn't have been a donk. It would just be like a turn one knockout. But still, <laughs> yes. It's, uh, yeah, that's a very, very swift uh, win there for Patrick Landerson game one. Got to be feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, KOing your opponent's only Pokemon on the first turn you're allowed to attack. Technically, we generally use Donk to describe your first turn getting a KO, but I think that was close enough that I can allow it. Do you want, actually, I just realized something. Do you know what makes it even worse? Andre helped Patrick by bringing up the Mew, so it, means it meant he didn't need to find a way to get the Genesect out of the active. Yeah, and, and I think it was one of those things, you know, it's awkward. You thought you were going to draw better off of the professor's research. Um, I don't believe there had been a deck search to find out that the Squawk ability was prized. Well, well, no, he didn't get the chance, right? He found no Pokemon search at all. He was a very, very, very poor opening hand and then uh, equally poor draw off the research too. And I think if you've got four Pokemon catcher in hand, you're going to play one <laughs> before you play a professor's research. It yeah. was, it just, we all have those games. That was just yeah, one of those exactly. games. Andre was never winning it. Yeah, yeah. And, going, and going for that was still correct, because yeah, it ended up helping Patrick, but ultimately, if you can get a KO on an energy, on an energy Mew, that is, you know, further tempo for you, then it would be just a KO with Genesec. So, you know, it, it made sense to go for it, but it just really, really backfired in this instance. Good news, it was a quick game. And both of these decks are capable of playing quick games far quicker than stuff like Gardevoir and Jarizard that we've seen previously. Although Mew can have some long turns drawing a lot of cards. So we should see, hopefully, a real best of three here. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely should. And uh, that's, that is what a nice thing about, you know, best of three series is that it means that you can account for one of these, you know, dud games sometimes, right? Sometimes, you know, luck is a part of the Pokemon TCG. Sometimes the deck just won't quite cooperate the way you'd like it to. But you have two more games to have a chance to make that come back and still win a match. Yeah, and unfortunately, when you pass into a Mew like that, needing two power tablets, Mew's like, mate, do you know how many cards I can draw? <laughs> I, I described Fusion Strike System a couple hours ago on the stream as the best draw ability we've ever seen. I feel good about that. I, I think you'd be... I, You'd be very hard pressed to argue against that, honestly. Especially that, like, you, you know, I think if I think back to myself, okay, if you were to pit all of like, the decks that have ever been against each other, right, and what would actually be like the strongest archetype overall, I think Mew would actually be in that conversation, just purely on the draw power it has and like the ability to reach certain crazy damage caps. There are some players out there who have emptied their hand and used Fusion Strike System four times and have literally drawn 24 cards in one turn with Fusion Strike System. That is almost half your deck. Can't, can't really argue with that, can you? <laughs> no, it, it's pretty good draw power. It's the kind of thing you, you look at cards we, we've seen, you know, recently you got stuff like Krikatune, for instance, where, you know, it's limited to once during your term. Yeah. Genesect isn't. Genesect's no. like, look, mate, as many Genesect as you can get, you use that many Genesect. And the draw power, it means, oh, I need two power tablet. I feel really good about this. Yeah, you know, it's funny with Krikatune. I feel like out of all of the draw engine Pokemon that have been released, that's one of the ones that's all like the least use in the end. Even though that ability has been great before on Oranguru with Instruct, it just seems like Excited Sage, yeah, just never really saw that much use. It did not. Did you see anything in the prizes there that worried you? Um, not particularly, no. There was one Genesect for Patrick, but only one is fine. He 
can still like, work with that. And uh, Andre's side, I didn't quite catch, unfortunately, but I think it was also fine. There was nothing I saw that worried me too much there. We do have a Forest Seal Stone coming down on the Moltres, which is lovely. And we've got a Turn 1 Earthen Vessel. So th this at least looks like a better start for Andre here. Uh, that, forest steel, uh, that Forest Seal Stone alone already makes this a better start because that means that Andre can just like, grab a battle, battle VIP pass and actually, you know, get Pokemon onto his side of the field. <laughs> but I mean, according to recent surveys, having Pokemon in play is a good thing. <laughs> Yes, but, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is how I would yeah. We're, we're going to get a battle VIP pass one way or another. The only way this Forest Seal Stone doesn't end up as a battle VIP pass is if Andre's hand is good enough to not need one. Yeah, and that's not the case from what I can see. There's no other VIP pass in there from what I can tell. There is a research that could be, could be good for next turn, although, of course, you'd rather go for a Professor Sardis Vitality to attach some energy as well as drawing cards. But, yeah, he's having a good look through there. Um, off the Urban Vessel does get one energy in a discard. That's nice as well. Two more energy into the hand. And, oh, wait, no, there is a battle VIP pass right at the end of the hand, I think. So that's going to get you some Pokemon. And, you know, there is a chance of Squawk Ability here. Use that Squawk Ability. Get yourself a new hand. It's awkward, of course, because with no supporter on turn one, but you can Squawk Ability, but you can only Squawk Ability on turn one. It does mean that you have to give up your hand to do so, including any supporters that might be there. Yeah, but, but in a deck like this, it makes sense, right? You want to have those aggressive starts. You want to set up your discard pile early on. You want to dig into the deck so you can start finding up your pieces to pull the combos together. So it makes complete sense. Wait, actually, hold on. I mentioned that I didn't catch anything in Andre's prizes. He's not going for a Squawk Ability here. But did he maybe prize it again? I might have completely missed it. <laughs> I don't think that he did, but I might have missed it. It's, it's possible. But there is always that possibility of, I don't want to get rid of my entire hand, not on turn one. It is the big downside of Squawk Ability. And, look, you know, if, if you can look at this and go, look, I've got a Professor's Research for next turn. I've got my Radiant Greninja. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And uh, so speaking of Radiant Greninja, we do see there the concealed cards coming in, getting another energy into the discard. Two cards drawn. It looks like that was, it was a Pal Pad and another Dark Energy. So as that's going to be the Dire Flame Wings and then a manual attachment from hand. Now, it's going to be interesting here to see if Andre just goes for the Forest Steel Stone straight away. He's probably thinking to himself, he might be w a little bit worried about a potential turn one KO, but having said that, it's very unlikely, especially as we know, this is more of like a sort of a crossover between like the DT and the Fusion build. There are Fusion Energies in the deck, but there's no Meloetta, so you're not worried about that turn one KO, really. No, and then we've seen in these builds, those Fusion Energy are basically there as a Spiritomb counter. You used to get them on your Genesect so that Spiritomb doesn't turn off all of your Genesect, just a couple of them. So we do see another Galarian Moltres coming down and another Roaring Moon. And this is building up to be an aggressive start. And now Andre is going to be able to do to evolve. Yeah, yeah. And if Mew's not going down, Genesect's going down. Andre's getting two prizes before Patrick gets to evolve. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. Looking at the setup here, Andre doesn't really need to put down the Squawk Ability. He actually found that second Battle VIP pass off of Trekking Shoes. That was a really, really good find. <laughs> um, got the Dark Patch ready to go as well, so can start charging up one of these Roaring Moons. And yeah, you don't need Squawk Ability here. It's there for when you need it, but it's also, it's also very sensible to when you know you can set up well enough without it to not use it because it is, of course, a two-price liability that only has 160 HP. And it's taking up a bench space. Like, it's not that small a bird. It's going to perch on your bench and it's going to take up one of those five precious spaces. You don't want to put it down unless you really need it. So Andre passes over in a very good position. Free energy on the board, turn one, without using a supporter card. That is not bad going. Oh, phenomenal stuff. Patrick going to start us off with a Cramomatic. Is it going to be a heads? No. Tails to start things off. Actually, uh, oh, that's oh. a terrible hand. It's Mew Mew, Path to the Peak, double turbo energy, not double colorless edge. I don't know who made that mistake. <laughs> um, and there was there one more card? It was a Mew V, uh, was a Mew v Max and a, I think, yeah, I think it was a Mew V Max and a double turbo energy. That is an atrocious hand from Patrick. Yeah, no Genesec, no way to search it out. That Cramomatic Tails was huge, because that Cramomatic, were it heads, would have got a Battle VIP pass, which would have got two Genesec. Yeah, that, that, that Cramomatic heads, no, Cramomatic Tails, rather, might legit just lose Patrick the game, because here's the other thing. If you, all you've got is a double turbo and a Mew, you can't copy, there's no Tetroplast to copy. It's like, what are you going to copy? Psychic Leap? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that's literally you can copy. Well, you can copy energy mix, I guess, but I don't really think that's going to be getting you uh, much further either. <laughs> no, um, there are no good options. And here's the thing: Andre's got free energy on the board, a uh, four energy on the board. Sorry. So you know, it's it's not going to take much to have a roaring moon rolling. Andre goes up two prizes, KOs the Mew, and 
That's probably not getting KO'd anytime soon. No, and uh, uh, like, so Andre just goes for the KO with the Dire Flame Wings, and that's a lost vacuum drawn from Patrick, and it's just the pass. Oh, goodness gracious me. So what do you think is going to happen in game three then, Freya? <laughs> I think we're probably about ready for game three uh, here. Because here's the thing, this Galarian Moltes is going to KO the Mew, and then Andre's got a backup attacker. Like, Patrick, this is a deck that has to attack with Mew, and looking at Andre's board, you can't attack with Mew. That, that doesn't, doesn't work. That's, uh, I mean, it does work, but it's way, way, way too late. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, what do you even for Steel Stone for? Because you can't go for a VIP pass. Like, I think you go to game three. Yeah, uh, well, Patrick is going to give this as a, an earnest shot. <laughs> I mean, you've already seal stone for a supporter card here, yeah. and I know is clearly going to be the play, because then you get a new hand of six, your opponent gets a hand of two, and we've actually seen this already at the yeah, front yeah. of the deck. Yeah, it's got to be Iono, and yeah. just hope you draw, you draw a Genesect. So not even for the draw necessarily, right, because obviously the draw would be nice, but there's a path that he can play. You just need the Technoblast to copy. You, you need like a, P, a, a Pokemon card that has the word Technoblast on it, or the attack Technoblast on it. You do. The problem is Andre needs an energy. And energy will win the game for Andre. Yeah. And look, there is a chance that this Iono puts Andre down to two cards. Andre draws nothing, and Patrick has a ridiculous comeback. Um, that's actually another problem. Um, Patrick needs to find a lost vacuum, otherwise that bench Moltres is going to activate that Star Alchemy from the Forest Seal Stone and win the game. I mean, that is also slightly <laughs> awkward, frankly. That there's probably an energy you can get from the from the Forest Seal Stone. Uh, like I say, I think Patrick, it's. It, there's no reason not to, right? You've got 35 minutes left. You are going to have time for game three. But, but, and I know I've called games too early many times. I've been doing this a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's, that's true. I think we've both been guilty of that at times. But, like, oh, was that a, a Tails as well? Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's... No. There we go. My point was going to be I've called games early a lot. I really feel like I'm not calling this one too no. early. Andre wins game two, and we are off to game three, and we are going to have time for a proper best of three series. We've had two extremely quick games. Can we get a proper game three? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, a proper best of three series. I, like, perhaps that's not the best phrase to describe it. Yeah, maybe we get like you know, a, a proper game three, and that will be, it'll be like it's a best of one in a way almost. Yeah. Hey, we've had two completed games. They were not the most competitive competitive or even games you've ever seen but we have had two completed games where one player got a win condition no, no, okay yeah very very fair <laughs> point so it is one apiece patrick uh, loses uh, game two and so andre takes game two so i guess if you're patrick now do you still want to do you still want to go first because then you have because it's nice to go first as Mew because obviously you can get your Mew VMAX out as soon as possible but then you're also giving andre the chance to like go second and take a turn one KO. it's a uh, Seems a bit. I guess that's still kind of the case. No, anyway. I want to go yeah. first because yeah. I do not want Andre to have two turns to set up a Pokemon before I've evolved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the problem for me, and that's that's one of the reasons that Andre did so well in that last game because Andre went first. He was KOing straight away. Yeah, you know, he, he was ready on his first attacking turn. He was ready to start taking prizes. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the equation changes with like the DTE Mew build specifically because if you go second with Fusion Mew, maybe you can actually get a turn one attack and yes. you know get a KO that way. But you can't do that with this. So yeah. Going first is always the correct move. Yeah, you go first here. You just, you, you hope it's more like game one than game two. <laughs> yes. You hope you can have a decent start. And Andre, I mean, that's the thing. That that game for Patrick was the worst of both worlds. It wasn't just that you had a terrible start. Andre's deck fired. Like, you didn't even need Squawkabilly, and the deck no. did that. You didn't even need Roy Moon. You literally took four prizes <laughs> from a Galarian Moltres V. Ah, but Roy Moon was waiting. Roy Moon was ready. Yes, is that true. <laughs> Okay, so we've got former world champion against former world top 32. We've got accomplishments all over the field here. And we've got two players who, for whom a win will put them into day two. It is that simple. A win puts a player to 6-1-1, guarantees that they will be back tomorrow to continue fighting for the title of Dortmund regional champion. The loser, they've got another winning in after. Yeah. And let's face it, given the amount of time left on the clock, weird things can happen but I think it's very likely that this game three is going to end, that this match is going to end in a win or a loss. <laughs> yeah, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. Here are the prizes. What do we see? Double Dark Patch. Oh, yeah, that's not great. On uh, double Power Tablet for Patrick as well. It's uh, workable, but not great. I think that's the way I describe both players' prizes here. And third game in a row, there's one Genesect in the prizes. Yeah, yes, and oh, but this time... Patrick can just grab it straight away with that uh, Hisuian Heavy Ball. Oh, it's lovely when you price something like that and you get the Heavy Ball turn one. That yep. is awesome.
Yeah, it, it just like it does so much at once, right? It lets you look at your prizes quickly. You get the Pokemon you need out. It, it's it's just absolutely the best thing to see. Turn one, and it means you don't have to do that awkward thing where you look through your deck and try and figure out yeah. what's prized. You know what's prized. Yeah. Oh, and look at this: the Forest Seal Stone as well. So <laughs> and the double Crown Matic. So Cram discarding Cram. Crams ahead. Hey, there we go. We have a second screen here that we can see underneath it. So we see it was ahead for a battle VIP pass, and Patrick is not having a repeat of game two. No, we've got multiple. Genesect, we've got heads on Kramer, which did not happen last game. We've got Forest Seal Stone, which hasn't even been used yet. I might we not even need to use it, let's be honest, depending on what else is in his hand. And that's a dream, like not using Forest Seal Stone. Yeah, because like, like we saw in the game two, right? If it's just there ready waiting and you can set up without it, it means that it's something that your opponent has to get rid of. Otherwise, you know they have the out to win next turn. Yeah, it's if you could like, you need it to set up, you need it to set up. But if you can save it to be like, look, when I need one card, got it, I've definitely got it. Yep. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. So a Mew off the first fusion strike system, like so bench that to make the second fusion strike system draw more. And then off of that for looks like it finds a feather ball and then ultra ball. So could go for that, could go for the chromatic as a you know, could go either way just thinking about the ultra ball here. You ultra ball for the third genesect. Yeah. Of that's course. what that's what you really want here. You want free genesect. You want your draw power. Like I say, some some people go for a 4-2 split. More often, we generally tend to see a 3-3. Free -free. You want the third Genesect. And honestly, because you've got so much draw now, you don't want to risk Tails on a Kramomatic yeah. when you can just draw yeah. an extra three or four cards a turn. So this would be a good, good point, Ross. So uh, perhaps uh, I'll sort of maybe a little bit of a test here. But for the folks at home, I think most people seeing that would think, oh, why would you You only need like you know, two Mews to attack? Why would you ever want you know the third Mew down instead of the fourth Genesect? So wh what would you say to the folks at home asking a question like that? I would say Psychic Leap. That, 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 that right answer. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> because when you copy Psychic Leap, you have to shuffle the Pokemon back into your deck. But no, so, you, you can. You don't have to. Uh, well, most of the time, you do yeah. it to, to heal, so you're yeah. right. But you do it because you want to do the healing. And it, that way you have the option of Psychic Leap while still having two Mew on the field, which is exactly what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. You have to have, a, you know, a, a, a card with a bit of text, Psychic Leap on, on the bench to copy it with, uh, you know, Mew's Cross Fusion Strike. So, yeah, third Mew down means, like you said, you can have two view, Mew VMAX, but still use that Psychic Leap and run away into the deck when need be, which uh, is a play we've seen many a times a great success before. It's very good. Speaking of a play we've seen many times before, how about Battle V? IP pass, and this time the old bird is out. Squawkabilly is on the bench, and we've actually got a second battle VIP pass. So it looks like we might get our wish, Freya. We might get an actual game where both players set up. Yeah. Here it is, where both players set up actually absolutely beautifully here. Patrick with an ideal board, Andre with an ideal board as well. So now it's going to be a matter of these decks are both rushing decks. They both want to race for two prizes as quickly as possible. Andre has an opportunity to take a lead in that prize race by if he can set up an attacker you know, going first here. It is possible. It is tricky. It's going to be up to him to piece it together. So it's really just a matter of us like going along for the ride and seeing what happens. I love hitting for weakness here because Galarian Moltres in a lot of matchups is a little bit too short. 220 is one of those magic numbers. Galarian Moltres hits 190. In this matchup, 190 is enough to get Genesect. Because of weakness, it's even enough to get a Mew V Max, honestly. Yeah, Galarian Moltres V is a phenomenal attacker against basically every single thing in the Mew V Max deck. Now, Andre, interestingly enough, was thinking about going for it, but decided not to and actually opted for a Mew EX instead. I kind of like Mew EX. It's extra draw power. It's not. It, it's good at copying attacks. That is not the goal here. You've got enough great attackers. Galarian Moltres V, Roaring Moon. That's what you're attacking with this game. Mew is down there as an extra bit of draw power. And between that and Greninja and your Squawkabilly, it does kind of look like Andre's going for it. Yeah, and, and of course you do, right? If you take the first knockout, that puts you in such a good contention to actually win the game because this is a racing matchup. If you take the first two prizes, then and as long as you can keep it up, you're golden. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, if you're trading two for free, you can go down two. And as Patrick takes two, Andre takes three. Patrick takes two, Andre wins the game. But that, you're relying on being able to KO VMAXs. What have you seen, Freya? I've seen a Pokemon catcher. Now, there's an interesting call here. Do you, since there's three Mews down anyway, do you consider doing a Pokemon catcher to bring up the Genesect of the Forest Seal Stone, KO that, and then take the Star Alchemy option off the board? I think it's going to be a fun play. I don't think you need to, but I think you absolutely could. I think yeah, he's considering it. Well, he's considering a Pokemon catcher. We don't know what he's going to go for yet. I um, mean, we know what he's going to go for. There's the heads. Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> well, the only other options were a Mew. <laughs> we already had one. Or a Genesect without the Star <laughs> Alchemy. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so, so Andre obviously reading my mind there, thinking, oh yeah, you know what, that's a, a really good call. And uh, the heads there off the Pokemon catcher, so is able to do it. But now is the second part. Can you actually piece together the energy that you need and the sort of the acceleration you need to get an attacker powered up to actually take the KO? Will you? Oh, now you you do have your Galarian Moltres which has got the uh, the Forest Seal Stone on. And that's that's generally what you're going for here, because you can use its ability to get an energy. There's an energy in the discard with Greninja. Well, there's an Earthen Vessel and a... No, sorry, no, Tracking Shoes, but another energy in hand as well. So, I mean, I mean you're missing energy in the first uh, discard that you did. So, finding energies now is very, very good. This is exactly what he wants. And, yeah, exactly. It is a lot easier on the turn on turn one to power up a Galarian Moltres V because you have that Dire Flame Wings ability, you have Dark Patches, that plus, you know, you can do a Dire Flame Wings plus Dark Patch plus Attachment, and that will get you there. And with the Forest Seal Stone, I think you're pretty close to piecing this together already. I mean, you've already got the energy for the ability. You've got Dark Patch if you need it. You need an energy in the discard, energy in hand. You have the switching out as well, and maybe that's one of the reasons why Andre benched the Mew uh, EX, of course, because it has a free retreat cost, so you can switch yeah. cart into it, bring it into the active, but then you can still dart patch to the Galarian Moltres V and set, up, set it up for attacking. Yeah, the pivoting option is already there. It is literally just dark patch, attach for turn, use ability, and you are there. Now, Squawkabilly comes out here. And that is a fine like set of cards to discard from Squawkabilly. Like, it's uh, all things considered, yeah, you're very, very happy with that. Any energy I'd like at least? Oh, there is one energy. So, are there two in the discard? Uh, yes, there are. There was uh, one that, that was discarded uh, off of, I can't remember what it was, but uh, there's there's one, and I definitely saw it. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, then we're there, because you can just use Forest Seal Stone to go and grab a Dark Patch, and then you Dark Patch one, ability the other, attach the one in your hand for turn, and then free retreat the Mew, and that's your KO. Yeah, now, again, the dynamic here, trekking shoes. If you can find a Dark Patch off of this, maybe you can save the Forest Seal Stone for later. But, oh, it's a... <sighs> the poker stop. Uh, not one you want to really discard, unfortunately. No. Actually, he's not used his poker stop yet, has he? I don't believe so. You could try and go for it with that, and again, that would mean you can save the Forest Seal Stone. But you do risk starting to discard stuff you don't really want to discard if you go down that route. So we do see the Dire Flame Wings here. And then is the question, if that Pokestop hasn't been used, do you use it to look for the Dark Bat, or do you just go for the Forest Seal Stone? We know the KO is on the board, that's the easy thing, the only question is the exact way Andre goes about it. Yeah, and you can tell Andre's agonizing over it, there's a lot in hand already, he's really trying to figure this hard, but it looks like, nope, just going to fire off the Star Alchemy here and now, so undoubtedly going to get that Dark Patch, and oh, to be fair, don't forget, we, we noticed at the beginning of the game, there are two Dark Patches prized, I'm sure Andre's, Andre's probably aware of that already. So, yes. you know, he's probably thinking about that. You know what? Playing the odds doesn't make much sense here. Let's just use the guaranteed option. No, I agree. The odds of hitting it any other way are quite slim. Let's just go ahead, get it with your Forest Seal Stone, and get rolling. So we know that it's all there, ready to go. And we'll see how big of an impact this KO makes. We did mention we weren't sure if it was the right move to go for. I suggested it as an option. But... You know, taking the only Forest Steel, Steel Stone off the board can be a pretty big deal. The only problem, of course, being Patrick does still have two more Genesects to work with, so still can be drawing a lot of cards with Fusion Strike System and maybe just find another Forest Steel Stone. The biggest issue here is going to be that if Patrick gets a return KO, which is very likely in a Mew deck, are you then going to be able to have enough energy? And that's really what it's going to come down to. If Andre can power up two more attackers, it's probably happening. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, helping towards that, we do see the power pads that can uh, shuffle one of the Professor Sardis Vitalities that got discarded back into the deck. So if you find that, that will get you a lot of the way there. Also, don't forget, there's two prizes being taken here. So uh, I can't remember what exactly order they were in, but there's a chance that maybe Andre can get Dark Patch off the prizes, and that would uh, put him in good stead too. That would be good. Play Professor Sardis, play your Dark Patch, Maybe there's another Galarian Moltres which can come out and start using Dire Flame Wings. Now we see oh. another Pokemon catcher here. It's a Heads. Are we just going back to Mew here? I no, no I guess we're going with a, another Genesect. I think we're emptying out the hand here. Okay. It's, uh, two Heads, thankfully, Andre. That uh, did That's work out quite well. Three Heads on Pokemon <laughs> catcher in one turn just to get one Genesect, <laughs> which you don't even... I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a decent play. It's not, but it's not like you have to get this Genesect. No, but it's the best Genesect to go for, oh, right? I so, agree. So, so it's like, I guess Andre valued the hand emptying more than the optimal Genesect KO in that instance. So you know what, even if like the heads don't work out in my favor, I'd still rather do this. 
And then that, that is exactly the point I'm making. It is a good play to take out the Genesect, but it's not essential. If it was, Andre would not have played those Pokemon Catcher. But you're preparing here, you know, Finning is winning. These are cards. Andre doesn't really need Pokemon no. Catcher. He's going to be attacking into the active Mew every turn. Yeah, like you mentioned right at the start of the, the game or the match, right? Basically, every single thing in Patrick's deck is very easily KO'd by all the attackers in Andre's deck. So you, you, this is not a matchup where Gusting is really relevant. So you just empty out your hand, and like I say, the getting the Genesect was good. It was the right play. It was the best play. But Andre's not thinking, oh, Patch is going to have that one card and I'm going to lose. Andre's thinking, if I power up two more attackers, I can't lose this game. Yeah. So Featherball from Patrick's finding the Mew VMAX. That's going to get evolved pretty post-haste, I imagine. Oh, God, it has an Ultra Ball for good measure. Probably going to try and find that last Genesect to get the, or as many Fusion Strike systems on board as possible and just, you know, do the Flood of Draws. Oh, no, actually, going to go for a, another Mew Max instead. Don't mind this at all, getting double Mew Max so that if one does go down, you're ready to go the following turn. Could even set yourself up and then play a path to the peak to try and turn stuff off, like Concealed Cards, like Dire Flame Wings, for instance, and, you know, getting yourself set up before you drop that path to the peak can be important or might just not want another Genesect. Who knows? There's uh, both double evolution happening right now. Fusion Strike System gonna draw up to five, it looks like. Finds a battle VIP pass with a box of disaster and then another Ultra Ball. Now, this Ultra Ball could be a Genesect if that's where you wanted to go. Box of disaster goes down on the Mew there. It's, um, yeah, there it is. Uh, Ultra Ball now cutting the VIP, of course, that don't need that. Um, yeah, there, there was not, okay, there was not a Jet Set to deck. I was wondering, maybe it just not, wasn't in deck for some reason, but no, it's definitely there. I guess in its instance, Patrick just valuing the double Mew VMAX more. Yeah, don't mind that at all. And it, it was in the prizes. There was one in the prizes, but we saw the turn one as yes. heavy ball to get it yeah, out the prizes. That so was it. After turn one, there weren't on prize. We now do, I mean, you always want the extra Genesex. It was just in the previous, you know, in the previous interaction, the extra Mew was more important. Yeah. So, Fusion Strike System number two going in for it now. Another box of disaster. Oh, finds a double turbo energy. That's very crucial. Actually, didn't have that up until now. So, is now able to attack. Uh, you could put the other box of disaster on the bench movie max. Yeah, that's going to happen. Oh, it finds a judge as well. That could actually be very strong. That could be good. And because of Moltres's self damage, there's no modifiers needed. Mew is hitting 190. Galeria Moltres has 190 left. Yeah, we do say that Andre having to pick up the box of disaster to read what it does. So uh, let's uh, in, in case you're you're in a similar position to Andre. Uh, so when it's attached to a Pokemon V and it has full health and it is knocked out, you place eight damage counters on the Pokemon that just attacked you. Really good into Roaring Moon because Roaring moon if you go for the automatic ko you leave yourself with very little hp remaining and box of disaster will actually ko you so it turns into a double ko but right now we got a judge yeah this is this is the this is the two-piece combo right hand disruption plus ability disruption if patrick can find a path to the peak now which we uh, we got the guarantee for there's the other forest seal stone yeah, we missed that one before. We don't miss it out here. If Patrick wants the path to the peak, it is absolutely going to be findable. But first, we're drawing till six cards in hand. We've got a boss's orders. We've got a lesser sparkle, which is kind of pointless in this matchup. But we got boss's orders, and now we're going for the the V Star. How confident are you as path to the peak, Freya? Pretty hecking confident, I would say. I mean, now it's clearly <laughs> confident. I mean, it's on the board. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer before it hits the board. I, I spoke too slowly. I was, I was going for emphasis, and then Patrick just completely ninja me on speed. So, yeah, don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but no, you are absolutely right. This is this is the play. We've seen this from you over and over again. You judge or Roxanne or Iono combined with Path to the Peak and just say to your opponent, I don't think you can draw out yeah. of this. Yeah, and let's, let's make no mistake, right? Roy Moon isn't one of the decks that's hurt the worst by Path to the Peak, but in this kind of build, look what's on the board. There's a Mew EX, there's a Radio Greninja. Those cards are affected by Path to the Peak. It means that it cuts off your, your, your best and most extensive draw options, but they're still draw options. If you can't use them, that will limit you. And Galarian Moldres V is a great attacker in this matchup. That's and a very good point. you need to accelerate one energy with Dark Patch to that rather than two energy with Dark Pat slash Professor Sada's Vitality to a Roaring Moon. So a lot of the time here, it can be better. But speaking oh. of Professor Sada's Vitality... There it is. Very important pickup. So able to attach one energy apiece to the two Roaring Moons, drawing three cards. And one, one of the strongest supporters to come out of uh, our most recent set. 
Yeah, it's pretty good from Paradox Rift there. Sorry, second, most, second most recent set, I should say, because of, because of, uh, of Palais and Fates, but yes. Most recent main set. Yeah. We can go for that. Mm -hmm. And worth noting, there's four energy switch in Andre's deck, so now we don't need a dark patch, and energy switch will do fine. Yeah, they don't see one in hand currently, and, oh, I, I mean, this is where the passage peak is awkward. There is ways to thin out. Oh, no, there it's it is. He's got Pokestop. He's got Pokestop, and there's an energy switch in hand, too. Yep. yep. So, so he's going to be absolutely gold, and we got the free energy. We've got the pivoting option with the Mew, and actually, you don't really want to replace the stadium here. Okay, you do want to replace the stadium here, <laughs> yeah. but when Roaring Moon attacks, you can get rid of that stadium. Yes, yeah, yeah, you can. So I guess, Andre, even with that in mind, thinking, you know what, I would really rather dig more into my deck. I know I'm kind of wasting a stadium discard uh, in that sort of sense, but it's still worth it. So mm. there is a slightly tricky aspect, though. I think Andre would like to find a way to deal with this box of disaster. Now, it's not the end of the world if you can't deal with it, because you still are favoured in sort of like the tempo of the price race. But having eight damage counts placed on you is not great, no matter which way you look at it. It's not ideal. It's not the end of the world because you can use... Because there's a stadium in play, then it means that you can actually right. use... Oh, the, storm. Yeah, but okay, I just realized something here. So if with this Ultra Ball, this now makes more sense because now you get uh, like two turns of Dire Flame Wings potentially on one guaranteed. So even though you wanted to discard the Path of the Peak with the, with the Stadium, it means that you couldn't Dire Flame Wings that turn. So that would have been why the Pokestop was played. No, absolutely. The issue becomes if there's no Stadium in play, when Andre comes back into his turn, that forces him to have a Galarian Moldres or use Frenzy Gouging. The reason I liked the idea, and you've laid out beautifully why the stadium got re replaced, the reason why I liked not replacing it was to basically, you've got a stadium in hand next turn, I can Calamity Storm two turns in a row. I don't want a Frenzy Gouging against a Mew, I want to Calamity Storm. Yeah, yeah, in ideal world you do. And uh, yeah, now can go for the Calamity Storm, of course, but actually, is there another energy in discard that Andre can accelerate? with the Die Flame Wings. I'm actually not sure if there is. So maybe Andre's thinking, you know what, I'm going to end switch this over, and that way I can actually go for a Concealed Cards. Or, or no, a Restart first, because there's only one card in hand. I don't think it was anything super impactful. I didn't... Oh, wait. oh no, he's already attached an energy for turn, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, it was Sada plus energy switch plus attached from hand. So yes. yeah, he's already attached this turn. That's why he couldn't attach that. That makes more sense. But we do want to try and get one on the Dire Flame Wings, which we absolutely do here. And that's why the Path to the Peak got replaced. So yeah. that you could use that. And using Mew is good. Using Concealed Cards is good. But that's the real benefit you get here. Like I said earlier on, Andre needs three attackers, and this matchup becomes very doable. He's now got second attacker built up, and next turn, if you can die flame wings and attach, you've got everything you need to finish out the game. Yeah, there is nothing that Patrick can put out that would be not KO'd by a Galarian Moltres V. So Andre knows this, and he's taking his time. He's being very you know, considered in his play. He knows he has the time to do this. He doesn't need to rush. The, the game one and two were very, very quick, as we all witnessed. So plenty of time to focus in on things in game three to make sure that every single move is precisely calculated. Yeah, now if you use Calamity Storm, you will have to discard the Stadium here, or else you only do 200 with weakness, rather than 440 with weakness, and you, you kind of want to get the KO here. You're going to take the damage from Box of Disaster. Uh, no. Oh. Okay. Was the Box of Disaster gone? No, he went for a Frenzy Gouging. But there was... Oh, Frenzy okay. that, that, yeah. That's exactly right, because Frenzy Gouging does not trigger the Box of Disaster, because it needs to be, so I wasn't specific with this earlier, it has to be knocked out by damage from an attack. But Frenzy Gouging, you take more damage than you would have from Box of Disaster. But to your point earlier, it keeps the stadium in play. Yeah, and I think <laughs> that is exactly right. It is keeping that stadium in play. Andre is, is playing this really nicely, giving himself the most opportunities for next turn. I'm going to get rid of this Path to the Peak now so I can get an extra energy with Galarian Moltres. I am going to keep my stadium in play. And look, it just got lost vacuumed away, OK? But maybe there was another world where it stayed. Yeah, and, and that knowing that that, that could have happened. That is exactly why Andre decided that going for the Frenzy Gouging made the most sense. So... Kind of heartbreaking to Frenzy Gouging to protect your stadium <laughs> and then see it lost zoned anyway. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But, I mean, you got to try, right? It's going to be very interesting to see what Patrick does here because, yeah, Palpad makes sense. You want to... Um, no, no boss going in, just the judge, interestingly enough. I guess Patrick is thinking, like... You know, bringing things up in boss orders isn't really as relevant right now. I just want to disrupt Andre as much as I can.
and you need to kind of get rid of the attackers with the energy on. You're going to be attacking what's in front of you here. Yeah, and this is why finding paths to the peak this turn is absolutely crucial. Without paths to the peak, you just uh, die flame wings and a manual attack from away from losing this game. So, yeah, finding energy, of course, that is very crucial. Another power tablet and another fusion strike system, drawing yeah. only two more cards. That was another judge. Power tablet, not relevant for the maths here. You're just fitting out your hand so you can draw more. And then we see a judge coming down. So Andre goes down to a four-card hand. You're going for the classic judge path combination here because otherwise it is way too easy for Andre to get the win next turn. Yeah, and that's exactly what you what If you're in uh, Patrick Islandis' position, you don't want to see. So it's not the best disruption he could have done. It was just what was available to him, but it's better than nothing. If he can't find path to the peak, it's going to be in a very bad way. If Even if he does find path to the peak, there's a chance for Andre to still um, run away with this, but it's all going to go down to this draw. So we see another Forest Seal Stone. You can fin that out of the hand, but oh, the rest of the hand is not very great for finning. Really is it? We got an eye and the boss's orders did not get it. And actually, for all of our discussion about which attack to use in Roaring Moon, if Boxer Disaster activates Mew KOs, if you frenzied gouging, Mew KOs. It doesn't actually make any real difference how much damage is on there. You're in Mew range. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is why it's better to just you know, have that non difference than just go for the stadium. Now, but here we go. Dire so Flame Wings. Is do we have an hand? attachment? There it yes, is. we do. And we're going to see a retreat. We're going to see a KO with Galeria Moldres. And Andre Shkubal is going to win two games to one and book his place in day two of Dortmund Regionals. Huge congratulations.